Hello YouTube and welcome to Ground Forks Place KSP. This is episode 94 of the Interplanetary Voyage of Exploration. And in previous episodes we've been focusing more on Duna, we've been focusing more on the uh, lathe. So today, uh, and in previous episode, we have also researched the mysteries of the carbonite. Although we don't have yet all the necessary parts, we, and with pa all the necessary parts I mean drills, but still we have enough parts. So, today I have decided to actually uh, build another support thing for our um, Duna station. It will not be a part of the station, but it will be a separate station, uh, and it will be lying in low Duna orbit. And it will actually be a refueling station because, uh, as you know, I mean, we will be going sending missions to the surface of Duna, back and also back to Kerbin. So to be able to support this kind of operations, we need some sort of refueling station. Uh, so the idea would be that we basically make another space station in the low Dunian orbit and hopefully from there my kind of thinking was that we would be using some sort of lander or something to be able to actually to be able to refuel or refill the space station so it would be using I guess carbonite drilling on the surface of Duna uh, refining it to the liquid fuel and oxidizer and then hopefully transferring it to the low Duna orbit. Uh, that being said, that basically means that we would actually need some sort of craft that would be able to do so and probably in the next episodes I'm thinking of designing such a craft. But uh, first things first. First thing we need actually a space refueling station. So. Uh, I'm thinking, uh, since I will be using two types of fuels, one is liquid fuel and oxidizer, another part is monoprop, which I have already here, and actually three fuel types, and the third one being um, liquid hydrogen, which I plan to use for the bigger craft to be able to burn from and to Duna. So I need to support these three types of fuels. And once again, as I'm doing this... Uh, uh, I want to do it symmetrical because I want to be able to easily attach this station to any other station wherever. So I'm still yet to determine whether or not this station should be a part of the Duna station that we are building or it should be a completely separate entity. For now, for the time being, I'm leaning towards a separate entity because my frame rate will probably <laughs> go bananas if I decide to use it. Anyway, so now this is the core of the station, like the main axis. And on that one, I plan to dock perpendicular, I plan to dock um, big orange fuel tanks off these two, on these two actually golden guys. So, yeah, so now I'm looking for the radial attachment point, which I plan to put, like, here. And then here, down, hopefully. So, something along these lines. And what I'm hoping to put there is now senior docking ports, because these ones are heavy enough to be able to, you know, dock. I need a, a stronger connection than the regular docking port, so these ones should do it. And then, so this would be like the main axis of the station, and these two other ports would be where we would be adding the fuel tanks. Well, nothing too complicated, but then again, why complicate things that are good? <clears throat> so yes, here then we want to put another adapters and here I was thinking to put actually the docking ports so the fuel tanks would be like up and down and on the sides there would be docking ports for those that actually want to go and dock 
whether it will be like um, and I wanted a little bit more clearing space because we don't know what type of craft we will be docking. We could be docking like regular ships, but we could also be docking SSTOs. And those do require a little bit more clearance, so to say. So once again, like I said, I'm designing completely symmetrical craft. It's very important because of the RCS thrusters and build dates. So this is station refueling station mark one. Basically, that's the whole ship, or at least, <clears throat> sorry, not the ship, this is the payload. So now we have to add some power generation, and we need to add, yeah, so I'm thinking Gigantors should be doing fine, and if we put them on both top and bottom, I think that should pretty much cover it, but to be on the safe side, I'm putting also four RTGs, two per side of the station, once again, symmetrical design, and the only thing that I plan to be asymmetrical regarding this guy is actually the remote tech antennas that will be used for communication. But, and by remote tech, I only mean the uh, the communitrons, the short range ones. The long range ones will still be symmetrical, and we'll place them roughly around here. Okay, I'm just checking the clearance between that one and the um, solar panel. Okay, then I do would like to put a carbonite scanner as well on this station somewhere. Because that would could also act as a station, <coughs> as a carbonite scanner, saying where is the... But I think I will actually launch it rather as a separate entity. I think it's more useful because we need the carbonite scanner to go into the polar orbit, actually. So, okay, putting additional fuel tank and putting the big nuke engine. So, just checking what is our delta V, 2.638 not really stellar because I do not plan to aero break in the orbit around Duna so and this is like around 5.2 which is way more promising so yes I don't think I need more this looks good enough now let's just strut it come on strut already will you okay great <clears> hmm <throat> then thinking about it, it would actually be better if we place them at an angle. Something along those lines. Looks much better, doesn't it? Okay, so, that being said, uh, let's put the RCS thrusters. We do want a symmetrical thrust, so... Yeah, not too many thrusters, and it will move slow, but then again, honestly, guys, I don't care. I just want it to be... Well put, and that's it. Great. Strutted, everything looks fine. Delta V looks promising, and then we put some more RCS, thruster on, RCS thrusters on this side. Hopefully that should do it. Okay. Uh, and I was thinking how cool it would be that we actually could somehow put the payload here, but I'm looking at 5 meter fairings and all those jazz. No freaking way we can actually launch this with a standard fairing. Fortunately enough, that is why we have unlocked procedural fairings. So I'm... First I was thinking, okay, so what the hell I'm gonna do with those? So in the end I figured, okay... In the body around curb and thrust weight is yes, 0.59. So let us see if we can put the 5 meter expanded. No way. It's too short. So the payload is, won't work at all with like 5 meter fairings. But okay. So let us put the procedural ones. This is the first time, by the way, that I'm using the procedural fairings. And I plan to put the form factor of 5. So 5 meters, and I need to put just a decoupler first, because the procedural fairings do not come with inbuilt decouplers. For some reason, I don't know why. Anyway, let's put these. Bam! Looks good enough. A 
Okay, now time to look for a tank and yeah, this is a five meter tank. I'm just looking for something that would be feasible. So 1.14 thrust and 4000 delta V. So delta V looks fine, but the thrust isn't. So I need additional boosters. And what better thing to put on than the like KW rocketry, my technology of choice boosters together with some Rhino engines. Those are just amazing. I'm still missing the biggest thruster, but then again, hopefully that would come soon as well. Okay, let's strut these guys a little bit. Or sorry, not strut, fuel line them. Fuel lines are important. This gives us better thrust to weight at takeoff, and then later when we're higher up, we don't need that much thrust to weight anyway. It is a huge damn fairing. Center of mass and center of lift are way off, which means the rocket will be super flippy. So that means we need some fins. And then I thought like, okay, wings, but those are more like plain wings. So they're freaking huge. So rather than those, I figured a little bit smaller wings and more of them. Well, yeah, no, I don't like it. Let's put another wings and see if we can get away with those. Four. Yeah, already works better. See? Let's put two more. I think this should work swimmingly. Okay, uh, let's put this uh, launch clamps. Hmm. Let's put them on the sides, otherwise the wings might clip through them and I don't want that. Okay, <clears throat> let's strut this big boy and let's strut also him from the inside to the base. Looks good and I actually pushed build. But then again, I remember there was one fault and I didn't have fairings. So I actually made sure that I have fixed that because that was a design flaw that I almost put in later re when reviewing this video I realized that that was missing so I decided to add it now build and build a vessel perfect so with that being built we actually need something more and I wanted to build a probe that would be a carbonite scanner because like I said we are basing our operations to be based on carbonite. So uh, carbonite we need to first learn how to scan for, how to extract and also how to, yeah, simply how was, was the workflow with it. So right now I'm thinking of designing a probe that should be able to go to the orbit around Duna and scan for resources. But since Duna is so far away and the transfers are so costly, I want to make sure that it works, which means I will be making a small probe that I would be sending to Minmus. And Minmus would be an ideal proving ground to see if the carbonite scanner works as intended. Assuming that it works, yeah, then we can apply the technology to go to Duna. So, okay, let's put some xenon tanks because this probe will be super light, so I'm thinking to power it with ion drive or something. Okay, maybe like this and then thrust away 0.67, but I don't need that much thrust anyway. I don't need even this ion thruster. I could get away with almost like a stock one. So yeah, otherwise I'd need to be putting like really huge Megalodor panels and I don't need that much. So after ion, oh, that one is also a little bit demanding. So, where is my regular Gigantor for crying out loud? Nuclear radio isotope generator. Hmm, should I use these instead? Maybe I should use these, yeah. 
Okay, uh, then I let's put it like this. 0 0.27 thrust, sure, but its thrust to weight is worrying me and it's unnecessarily low. Hmm, what if I put this PBI on? Then I don't need this huge solar panels. I could get away with much smaller. Hmm, let's see, let's see. Maybe just regular Gigantors. Or maybe smaller, maybe even these. Yeah. Mm, this should work pretty nicely, actually. So, yeah, 0 0.21 thrust, I think that's good enough. Let's put um, antennas for the remote tech. Let's put um, carbonite scanning equipment. I still need that remote tech antenna to be able to control the ship. Good. Now, the probe is looking more like what I would actually like it to be. Now, that being said, at Minmus you need a longer range, which means that we need a bigger antenna, because we do want to steer it. So, yeah, once again we'll point our antenna towards... So, on one side we have antenna, on another side we have a tank. Not 100% symmetrical, but I guess we'll have to live with it. So, another small antenna here, sure. When you... When you're taking the um, remote tech, you cannot go overboard with antennas. That's one thing for sure. So, okay, second, the, the solar panels, and third, the uh, comms DTS Mark 1. Okay, that being said, this looks like what we would want ideally for the probe. So, I was thinking of even sticking one uh, RTG on this side, just to make sure we never ran out of power something along these lines, but it's so horribly, horribly asymmetrical. I mean, weight-wise, it's the same, but I really want to relocate this um, RTG somewhere. So let's first put you like this, much better, and then means antenna will go somewhere around here. Once we open the solar panels, it won't be in the way of antenna. Hmm, yes. Okay. Time to put the fairing. It even fits in 1.25 meter fairing, which is beautiful. That means it won't be pretty hard or huge to build. Okay, let's put the ascent stage. I also want to have it reusable launcher because this one will just launch to the orbit around Kerbin. So yeah, that's fine. Uh, maybe not. We'll see. 3.340. I want a little bit more oomph in it. So that's what it's going to be. 1.91 and 4.096. I think that sounds more like the numbers I would shoot for. Okay, then I need uh, another antenna on this guy. And I would need some... Some, basically, fins. Do I need anything more? Well, yeah. I guess I could use two boosters. Just to add that little bit extra of Delta V. I don't need much, nor do I care to have much, so... Yeah. I think this looks rather cool, and I'm just now thinking to set the thrust limit, thrust limiter, so that my thrust to thrust to weight ratio is roughly 1.6 at takeoff. Just putting some batteries as well on the ascent stage, and a small remote tech antenna that I fully intend to use. Cool. I think that pretty sums it up for our. Return stage and the return stage wouldn't truly really be a return stage without the parachutes now, would it? Okay, building the vessel and basically that would be a carbonite scanner for at least the test around Minmus. So, let us go and prioritize that one and warp to complete, hopefully. Our Duna window is 56 days away, so we have still some time to actually do this. 
and then the refueling station will be built for a little bit more while to come. So while we're going and testing to Minmus, the refueling station is being built. That's the idea anyway. Okay, three, two, one, go. And we immediately fire off the caps from the boosters. I never used them, so I didn't know that they work in such fashion. Already starting easily on, my, on our gravity turn. Getting ready to ditch the boosters. Booster separation successful. Thankfully nothing exploded from our main rocket. Dancing a little bit, flipping, flipping, flipping. <clears throat> Not fully flipping, but still. This is actually, this was so relaxing and so satisfying because this was, I believe, the first rocket after the episode maybe 15 or 24 that I had more like more than 15 frames per second. This one I was actually playing in 20 and I was so darn happy. So, yeah, so basically that just means that I cannot wait for 1.1 version to hit. Um, I don't know if that will spell out the end of this series. Probably it won't until I'm satisfied with the level where what we have achieved. But that means that there will be another series for sure in 1.1 assuming then when the mods get updated. Okay, extending the solar panels, extending the antennas, and preparing for the circularization burn. 860 meters to go, meters per second to go. So, burning for circu circularization, Okay, perfect. Okay, now I want to be setting Minimus as a target and I want to align ourselves with the sending and descending node to correct the inclination and then I think I will be getting rid of the ascent stage. So it should have enough delta V to come back to Kerbin, hopefully. I mean, 600 meters per second, that's enough almost as from return from like almost Duna. But not really Duna, but I guess. Okay, so we are coming up on the, I think, ascending node. Okay, perfect. So now let us plan our ejection burn to Minmus. And here we go. Perfect. Add a little bit more, less, whatever. And it will take a total of 910 meters per second. So, yeah, I think at this point I was thinking, why waste the fuel from the ascent stage already? I mean, I wanted to return this guy back to Kerbin, but then again, I would be losing on some precious fuel and... Um, at this point, getting fuel up that high is actually more of a cost than it is to actually redesign this booster because it's so small. So, estimated burn, 22 seconds. Doing some time acceleration, getting ready for the burn and kicking the gas. And now we are actually continuing with our probe. The rocket gave us initial push, so we only have 240 meters per second more to burn. This is a nice screenshot. And I'm opening my remote tech dish just to make sure that I do talk back to Kerbin. 
I really like the look of that carbonite scanner. Looks like it's doing something important here. So it's kind of it's it's, it's actually quite fun. Yeah. Okay. X pushing our orbit, pushing, pushing, pushing our apoapsis. We do want to be arriving at Minmus pretty soon. So yeah. 50 more meters per second to burn. Twenty more meters per second to burn. And bam! That's it. Perfect. Okay. That pretty much means that I was thinking of fixing the fixing basically the inclination to that we go slightly into the polar orbit. But I don't know, I guess this is so close that I don't know if, if it's even worth fiddling to be honest. Okay. Anyway, let us time warp until we get near Minmus. Like I said, now the goal would be just to deploy the carbonate probe, see how it works, and then prepare for the rest of the tech that needs to go to Duna. Okay. Anyway, let's see how we will be taking care of that. So let's plan for the polar orbit. Okay. 2.4 meters per second correction burn, not a whole lot. Let's see how we are leaving Kerbin behind. It's a nice view of Kerbin. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> doing the burn. Let's see what does this look like. And it looks pretty decent. I actually am pretty happy with the way it looks like, so let us just execute here an orbit retro what yeah I think I pressed the wrong guideline so let's see okay or like I said orbit retrograde burn to put us in the polar orbit 162 meters per second not a whole lot which I think it's pretty decent so let us now look for where is Minmus hmm Okay, I don't see it yet. I probably am blind. I should be quite close to Minmus, actually, shouldn't I? Hmm. Okay, nearing SOI change. Oh, there is Minmus. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Now, okay, now we're closing in on the... Now we're definitely closing in on Minmus. And... Um, Let's take a screenshot and let us enjoy the view. Bam. Okay, coming up on our maneuver node. Kerbal alarm clock is stopping us in the tracks to make sure that we burn when the time comes. We have estimated burn of 1 minute and 32 seconds. And I think once I place this guy in the orbit, I will be calling it for the episode because we are closing in on our 30 minute mark. So, yeah. So, and then we'll be basically making sure that we have kicked the carbonite production, I guess. Or, not the production, but scanning at least. 30 meter meters per second. And... Yep, here we go. Nice scanning altitude, we have good connectivity. So yeah, starting the resource scan and scan set altitude ideal. Yeah, I'm hoping to actually be able to see the resource. Anyway guys, this is the end of this episode. Thank you very much for watching. This is Gromforks signing off.